parentheses, and when you multiply these parentheses together, you get the original polynomial. All right? So before we do that, before we try to find those factors, let's remember what it looks like when we multiply two uh, parentheses together. So let me just make up another problem. Uh, x minus 2 times x plus 17. Picking numbers at random. Not related to this green problem over here, just totally different numbers I'm picking. But it will help us when we go to factor this other guy. Can someone instruct me on how to multiply these two things together? Yes. Um, well, I mean, like, the thing is, you don't want us to if you if you use it, it's not the end of the world. It's just that uh, okay, so yeah. You use the first times the first. So this first guy here, distribute that. Okay, we're distributing the x to the x. That's x squared. And then you multiply this guy by that one, so you get plus 17x. And then you do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> x negative two times x. And then negative two. Negative 2 times 17, negative 2 times 17, negative 34. Negative 34. And we combine these like terms. This is, a, this is something that quite a few of you had trouble with. Only like terms can be combined or added and subtracted. How do I know like terms are like terms? What makes them like and what makes them not alike? Like? Do you have the same exponents or same variable or no variable? Well, both. Yeah. Right? Same same exponent on the same variable. And if they don't have that, they're not like terms. You can't put them together. You can't add an x to a y. You know, that's not x, y. Uh, you can't add x squared to x to the third. Those are the same variable. They're not the same exponent. The only like terms are these two because they have x right, to the first and x to the first. So it's 15x and then you get the minus 34 and we're done. There's no more combining like terms because there are no more like terms. So the thing that's going to help us, looking at this, to factor x squared plus 7x plus 12 is what we're going to have over here looks very much the same as this. It's got an x here and an x here. Why? Because x times x needs to give us x squared. And we, we can multiply this stuff in any order. So the, the next most useful thing would be when we multiply this number times this number, which we don't know what the numbers are yet, when we multiply those two numbers together, what will we, or what should we come up with? 12. Come up with 12. I'll get it backwards. When we multiply the numbers together, we get 12, right? When we multiply negative 2 times 17, that's what gave us the only constant that there is, right? The only just number by itself, negative 34. Right? So just like that, this number times this other number needs to be 12. So we're thinking about all the numbers that multiply to 12. There's, there's quite a few of them. Three and four. Let's try, let's try something that's wrong. Three and four would be right. Let's try six and two. Six and two do multiply to 12, don't they? Yeah. Okay, now don't just say that they don't add to seven. Why would they even need to add to seven? Because when we distribute the x to the two, we get two x. We distribute the six x, we get 6x. That's where our x term comes from when we multiply the numbers each to their own x and add them together. We should get 7x, but this comes out to be 8x. So it must not be 6 and 2 that we need to find. That's not right. 6 and 2, those aren't the numbers we're looking for. It's already said by Megan. It's 3 and 4, not 6 and 2, not 12 and 1. And four. The x times the well x times x is x squared. X times four gives us four x. Three times x, three x. Three times four, twelve. So when we say that these two numbers need to multiply to twelve and add to seven, that's why. I mean, it's just the result of multiplying the two parentheses together. Two plus seven x plus. That's it. If you can remember, or just 
come up with the two factors and just always check your answer. Check your answer, check your answer. Multiply them together, and if you come up with the polynomial that you were given at the beginning, then you got the right answer. That's the great thing about factoring. You can always just go back and check. And if, there's, if it's not right, try again, check it again. And I give this one to you, x squared plus 9x plus 20. How that factors. I know what you're trying to do. Building? No. Oh, I can't. What? How does that factor this polynomial? You have to take x. You have to, um, I made two little, like, like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. X and x, all right. Yeah. Start there. And I have to do it out on the calculator. So I just got to what? Did what are we going to do? I don't, well, you have to find what two numbers yep. go into nine. That equal, when you have an equal 9, and what, when you times an equal 20. Okay, and those two numbers? No clue yet. 4 and 5. 4 and 5. Oh, I didn't know that. Never mind. All right. So, you can think of it in two different ways. You could say, you could ask yourself, what adds to 9? That's a lot of things. But if you ask yourself, what multiplies to 20? That's a lot less things. There's a lot fewer combinations that uh, multiply to 20 then add to 90, or sorry, 9, not 90. Right. So break down 20 into its factors. Make sure you got the signs correct. Which signs do we need to use? And then see which ones add up to 9, add up to whatever it is that you're trying to get. I'm going to change this real quick to a negative 11x. these together, so let's do that. Multiply these together. X times X. Square. Square, that's what I need. X times negative 2, negative 2X. Two yeah. Also, negative 9 times X gives me negative 9X, so those are going to go together. Negative 9 times negative 2, positive 18. X squared minus 11X plus 18. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Now, in our path out your quiz, take out your quiz. If there's... Let's do one of them. Is there one that's really, that just really gives you trouble? You feel like you still, if you got it wrong, or you know, can you get it right? <laughs> okay, read it out to me. Parentheses, x, oh, sorry, do it, um, parentheses, 3x, the third I meant specifically a factoring one. Specifically, one that you do a uh, factor, not just any copy. A factor. Never mind. Steven? Actually, I got that one right. Factoring problem that. <laughs> if there's none, then that means maybe. If, okay. No, I got it. Alright. This is a lot like this one because multiplying and getting a positive number and adding and getting a negative number. You think about it, you know those two numbers have to be negative, right? You're going to multiply to make a positive, positive 54, and add to make a negative. The only way to multiply to make a positive is positive times positive or negative times negative. And if they're going to add to make a negative, then they both got to be negative. Okay? So what two numbers do this? What two numbers, like, what, what are the factors of 54? 6 and 9. 6 and 9? Will that work? Yeah. 6 and 9 x squared minus 9x minus 6x plus 54 x squared. Minus 11x plus 54. There we go. 11? 
What did I say? 15. We can. Hmm. I don't know why. Magic okay. games. Maybe because I was thinking of that one. Minus 15 extra. Um, you and now I'm just curious. What was your question, Katie? It clearly wasn't a factory question. Uh, so now you read that off. You said it was three. Um, x to the third power plus seven x to the sixth power okay. plus three parentheses plus parentheses negative five x to the sixth power plus nine plus five x to the third. Okay, this is the one that I said before the quiz started. Be careful because you might think that I'm supposed to multiply these two together. Okay, remember the way you write this. I know some of this is you just kind of get used to the, the symbology of the whole thing. But if I want you to multiply two parentheses together, then I'll just put the parentheses right next to each other, but with a plus in the middle. I'm not saying multiply them together. I'm saying add them together. So take all of these and add to them all of these. Take this and add a negative 5x to the 6th and add a positive 9 and add a 5x cubed. Okay. The most common mistake here was distributing everything here, everything there, getting nine different terms and then trying to combine like terms. Combining like terms here. So 3x to the third plus 5x to the third is 8x to the third. 7x to the sixth minus 5x to the sixth is 2x to the sixth. And 3 plus 9 is 12. Any other questions from your quiz, feel free to come after before school, try and catch me at lunch, prep period, anything like that, come by and ask at that time. Right now, we're going to move on to which section? 9.4, 9.5. Alright, so let's open up our notes. Books if you like. And this loudly while we get our notes out. The sarcastic yes is not a really good thing to do. Obviously, that's not what we should be doing. If you have something that you need to quietly ask someone for some reason, that's fine. But it's not chat time. If you feel like you're doing so well, you should just be talking at every opportunity. That's, it's up to you. Just don't think it's probably the best idea. It's probably not the best strategy. For you, okay. I'm gonna give you an overview of what are we what are we gonna be doing today. Just that, like heads up, so it doesn't seem like new thing after new thing after. We're gonna do some factoring again, but it's gonna be in, in some sense, if you think about it, I guess it depends on the person. It's even a simpler kind of factoring. We're just factoring in monomial, okay? Mono meaning what? That'll make more sense in a minute. Then we're going to be given quadratics that have already been factored in an equation. We're going to solve those quadratics. And solving a quadratic equation is different from like the strategies we use. It's different from solving a regular equation. When I say regular equation, I mean like a linear equation. Okay? Here's an example of a linear equation. 5x plus 2 equals 9. Okay? Let's solve that. Subtract 2 on both sides, divide by 5. Pretty simple. So solving a quadratic you're going to use a different approach. You're not just going to start subtracting on both sides and dividing on both sides and that kind of thing. So we'll start there. 
Um, then in 9.5, we're going to solve equations again. We're going to solve quadratic equations. Um, by factor. So that basically means that these equations will be like these ones, and these ones will be factored first, and then we do it exactly like we would this kind of equation with the factor. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense quite yet, but let's now get started. We're going to start by factoring out a monomial. So let's define what a monomial is. Okay. Mono means one, nomial means a term. Okay, so let me give you some examples of monomials. Uh, the number four is a monomial. The variable x is a monomial. 4x is a monomial. Okay. Uh, 12x squared y to the third z to the fifth is a monomial. All of these are examples of a single term by itself. So let me give you uh, something to contrast that with. Okay, contrast it with a binomial. What do you think a binomial means? Two terms. Not one term, but two terms. So what's a binomial look like? We've been looking at binomials for a long time. Here's one, five x plus three. It's that plus sign that tells us we've got another term. Two terms being added together. Uh, 2x squared minus 14 is another binomial. 3x to the 6th, y to the 5th, plus 9xy to the 7th. Also a binomial. Two terms, one added to another. So, how about a trinomial? Can someone give me an example of a trinomial? Nine x to the eighth plus. Okay, minus seven. We're working together, collaborating. Eight x to the third plus nine x to the eighth minus seven. That's a trinomial. Okay, so each term gets its own sign. We're adding and we're subtracting the terms together. Okay. So what's it look like to factor out a monomial? Let's look at that. Let's start with a simple example. Three um, x plus. So we're going to look at all of the terms, and so far there's two of them. We're going to look at all the terms and see what's the largest factor they have in common. We're going to factor it out. And another way to think of factoring out is undistribute. Dis distribute. Distribute. E I U. Like do the reverse of distributing. You know what distributing looks like? We're going to do the reverse of that. What's the biggest factor these have in common? Three. 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 Factor out the three. So we're going to imagine that this three gets distributed into the parentheses. So what would have to be in the parentheses so that we want to get a three x plus nine? What would the first term be? X. X. Three times x. Three x. What would be the second term? Three. Three. Three times three gives us the nine. Okay. And here is the greatest common monomial factor that we can pull out of that. Let's do the second one. I'm going to give it to you. You see it. You get the, the basic idea. Mm -hmm. We'll start with, uh, for you, 25x plus 9. The greatest common factor that they have. Factor it out. Undistribute it. So if you did distribute it back in, well, then you be right back where you started. This together. So now, however you want to think about it, uh, try to figure out the number that can be factored out. What number can divide both of these? What goes into both of these? Like all these different ways of thinking, it's all the same thing. What is the biggest number that divides both of these numbers? Five. Five. Right, not 25. So that's the only one, other one I. So if five is the biggest number that can divide both of these, that is what we are going to factor out. We're going to undistribute the five. Okay, here's the parentheses. We're going to distribute the five to a what to get 25x? 
Just x? 5x. 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 Right? 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5x is 25. Okay. Sure? Okay. And then plus one. what? One. 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 5 times 1 is 5. There we go. Okay, one last quick one. Um, 7x plus 15. What number can divide both of those? Or what's the biggest number that can divide both of those? Put that outside the parentheses and distribute that number. Don't just disappear it. Don't make it go away completely. Take it outside the parentheses. Okay. What is the largest factor that these both have in common? Three. 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 Okay. So three times what is the 27x? Nine. Nine X. Nine X. Nine X. Plus five. Okay. Because when you distribute the three to the five, you get your fifteen. Okay. So now we're, we're factoring monomials, but we don't. We're not limited to only numbers. Also, some variables can be common factors. So let's take a look at that possibility. Um, Say 21x squared plus 14x. Okay. I'm help you out with this first one. What's the biggest number that you could factor? Seven. Seven. Okay. But look, they also have common factors of x. So factor out an x? Yep. 3x. 3x. Mm -hmm. Okay. Factor out an x. Two. Plus what? Two. Just two. Yeah. No x's. No. Just two. Okay. Maybe Derek's wrong. If he's wrong, then we can test it and find out because we just distribute the 7x. 7x times 3x is 21. X times x is x squared, so 21x squared. 7 times 2 is 14. Times x is 14x. So he was right. No. What about, let's change it a little. Let's make it 21x to the 4th plus 14x to the third. <laughs> right, what's the biggest number factor you can pull out? Uh, 7. Just seven. still 7. To the third. 7x seven. Seven to, to the, the third. third. It's not squared. Okay. Let's test it and see. Okay, well, what would be multiplied by here? Uh, 3x. 3x. Let's see, we distribute the 7x to the third. 7 times 3 is 21. x to the third times x, so that's 1, 2, 3 x's, times 1 more x, times x to the fourth. Just the 2. Just the 2. Katie? Derek was just saying 3 times 1 is 1, so. 3 times 1 is 3, so you would actually add the. You add, the, you add the exponents. Why do we add the exponents? Because x to the third times x. Do we add these exponents? Yes, we do. Because x to the third is x times x times x times another x is how many x's? Four. Four. That's how we write four x's times each other is x to the fourth. Right? If we were to multiply the exponents, it would be because we were doing x to the second to the fifth. Right? That'd be 10x's. It would be 10x's. Ten ten. We'd have five groups, right, because of this fifth, of x times itself. That's a lot of x. All together, that's how many? How many? <laughs> 10. 5 times 2, 10x's.
Ethan's house. What? I don't hear Ethan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you do this this is I can't hear him. So I can hear you. I just broke my couch there. Now I'm here. That's my phone, bro. This could feel like a really long day, or it could feel like real nice and easy if we all could just get along, you know, and not make lots of noise. Uh, just you know, the, having a conversation, any questions you might have, uh, and any instruction that I might be giving, those are the noises you should hear. Let me give you one. Work on your own. Um, it's... What's the biggest number that we can factor out? Five. 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 We can factor out the x's. Yeah. X to the fifth. I saw a lot of x to the fourth, and it was done correctly, but we could factor out a total of five x's. X to the fifth. Seven. Five x to the fifth times seven is 35 x to the fifth. Plus 11 x to the fifth. Second, 5 times 11 is 55, x to the 5th times x squared, add them up, x to the 7th. I don't get it. So is there a different way to do it? Yeah. All right. Yes? So, do you have to do it that way, or is there like different ways that you could do it? Different ways. Like different ways you could give the same answer. 5x to the 4th and then have 7x. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Like factor out an x to the fourth instead of x to the fifth? Yeah. Yes, that's different. But the way we know that we've like done it right or, or all the way is we factor out as much as possible. So if you factor out an x to the fourth and got 5x to the fourth times 7x plus 11x to the third, then they still have a factor in common that we could factor out, that we could undistribute. Okay. We could factor out another x. And, well, it would just give us this guy right here, 5x but to the 5x to the 7th. Plus 11, so. If we did, like, 5x to the 3rd and then 7x to the 2nd plus 11, like... Then that's not correct. Yeah. Right? Oh, this is a 7, I think this... That's a 7. That's a 7. It was a 3. <laughs> I don't think it looks that much like a 3, but 7 looks like a 3. Oh. A three. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> If that were a three, then you would have had it correct. But it's a seven. Just changing. I didn't think it looked that much like a three. Okay. Sure, it's a good seven. Thank you. Talking about this unfavorable, distasteful thing, and it just starts happening. Okay, <laughs> chill out. You see what? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. As soon as we give it like some some real honest work for like I don't know two minutes straight, <laughs> and maybe we'll take a break. But so far we just keep taking breaks. Here and there and there and every time I turn around, every time I walk over there, and every time I walk over here, break after break after break. Let's really work hard and maybe we'll take a break. You can't take a break for something you haven't done yet. Alright, so factoring out monomials, why don't you give me a you know a show of hands, scale one through five, one not so good, five, really good. How confident? Four and a half. I feel like I'm factoring my own heels. Ten. Oh, ten. Five, five, four. I feel upset if you don't vote. Ten. Okay. 
Just do one. Well, please vote. Just the one. Don't vote if you don't want to, but you can't complain if we move on. But let's do one more. One more. One more. Okay. Um, with uh, a common factor. Okay, so three is a common factor. You can pull a three out of here. Maybe you pull something else, that's fine. I'm gonna pull a three. I'm gonna pull out x to the um, third. X to the third. Are these, is three a common factor between these two? Yeah. Is x to the third a common factor? Yeah. 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 So maybe not the biggest, but it is a common factor. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, what does this have to be? Three times? 13. 13. 13. X to the 6. six. 3 plus 6 is 9. Minus, Minus 26. 26X to the second. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, yeah, so if I distribute the 3 to the 13, get 39. X to the third times X to the 6 is X to the ninth. Uh, same for 3X to the third times 26X to the Please. second will give me 78X to the fifth. Yes. So, I've done good work. But there's more to do. Yes? Katie? There's a bigger factor we need to pull out. A bigger factor. What factor did you pull out? 39. 39. 39. Okay, so let's look at what I have here and ask, is there a factor that these two still have in common? They have, is 3 a factor of 13? Mm -hmm. Just kidding. 3 is also not a factor of 26. Okay. But what is a factor of both 13 and 26? 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. The whole thing. So a factor out of 13, okay, then, then when that 13 comes out, that's 13 times 3 is what? 39. What's 13 times 3? 39. 39, just like Katie just said, right? To pull out a 39. Well, I pulled out a 3 and then a 13 for a total, you know, a total product of 39. What about the x's? Can I pull out more factors of x? Yeah. How many? Five. A total of 5. Mm -hmm. X to the fifth. Okay. So... 39 times what gives me 39? One. One. X to the fifth times what? Is fourth. X to the ninth? X to the fourth. Yeah. So we have X to the fourth there. Two. Minus? Two. What? Two. Two, two. yeah. Like mm -hmm. Back on the 13 for both of these, you get a one, you get a two. Um, X? So, I don't need anything. No. Just, just, no. just the number two. No. Yeah. All right. Dangerously close to restarting this timer. Okay. Factors of monomials, factor lots of monomials over and over and over. Uh, so now let's work into uh, solving a quadratic equation. Okay. So let's define that first. A quadratic equation, Derek? No, I'm not nice with a quadratic equation. Okay. Let's define it. All right. A quadratic equation is an equation. Let's start there. What's an equation? Yeah. Something that has numbers. Some with some numbers. Variables. That's an input and an output. That's a function. Next try. Yeah, it was an next try. What's very important to an equation? Equal sign. Equal sign. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It has an equal sign. Okay, that's pretty profound. Uh, it's very hot. Thank you. Oh, then don't. Okay. Um, so we got an equation. Has an equal sign. That's what makes an equation an equation? And what we're saying with an equal side is this side is the same as this. So it's pretty essential to have if we're going to solve 
equations to have an equal sign. Okay, equation. What makes it quadratic? What makes it quadratic is if there's some variables like x, then the highest power of x that you see is a x squared. So like 2x squared plus 5, we're not going to solve this one, but I'm just giving you an example. Minus 5 equals 2x minus 3. Like all throughout this equation, the highest power of x you see is 2. So that's quadratic. Quadratic means x squared is the highest power that you'll see, and the equation is the thing with an equal sign. So here we have a quadratic equation. Okay. Uh, so let's solve a quadratic equation that, as I put in the, that first slide, that is already factored. To solve quadratic equations, we factor the equations. Can someone pop that door open so we get a cross? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, let's look at a quadratic that's already been factored. You can factor quadratics like the things that you factored on the quiz, those are quadratics that you factored. So let's look at one that's already factored. This is a Primo ideally set up equation for us to solve. Right. Before we can solve it though, we've got to understand some things. It's a very important thing called the zero product property. Start with this. If I take two numbers, a number A and a number B, and multiply them together, could you imagine that? Mm -hmm. And I multiply two numbers, two numbers that you don't know, that's why I'm using A and B. We don't know what A is, we don't know what B is. There's no way we could, because we don't know anything about them. They're not part of an equation. Oh, yeah. Okay? But what if I told you I multiply two numbers together that you don't know, like I just have them secretly right here in my hand, and I multiply them together, and I tell you the answer though is zero. Is there anything you could tell me about A? And B or A or B. Perfect. Yes. That's exactly what the zero product property says. Or, wouldn't it be like a negative three to positive three? Negative three plus positive three oh, would be plus. zero. Okay. okay. So the only way to multiply and get zero is to multiply by zero. Only way. So A has to be zero, absolutely has to be zero, and if it's not, then B has to be zero. And if it's not, then you must have been lying to me in the first place. A times B equals zero means A is zero or B is zero. They don't have to both be zero at the same time, but one of them has absolutely got to be zero. It's the only possibility. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Follow me. Two things can multiply together. The answer is like a, a murder mystery. Two numbers got multiplied together, and the answer was zero, so I definitely know that one of them was zero. I don't know which one for certain, but definitely one of them has to be. So this is very much the same thing. Here's a number, right? That represents one number. That's being multiplied by another number, two numbers multiplied together, like A and B. That's not important. We don't need to write A and B for any reason, but it's a lot like this guy over here. A times B. Some number times some other number is equal to zero. Okay. So what did we say? What, did, what does that definitely mean about one of these numbers? One of them is zero. Now, I can't say which one, so I just got to say, well, what if this one is zero? What would that mean? And what if this one is zero? What would that mean? Okay. So either this one number right here is zero, and then you multiply it by this and you get zero. So we set that up. So you, get, you don't have to write this, but you can say either. Either that happens. Or what else had, would have to be equal to zero then? Not the x. That's a mistake that a lot of people make. It's not that the x has to be 0 or the well, 3 can't be 0. 3 is 3. Oh. <laughs> the whole thing in this box, or parentheses, that whole thing would have to become 0. It would have to result in 0. Right? I don't know what x is. I'm not saying x is 0. I'm saying the whole parentheses is 0. 3x plus 5 is 0. That's the only way that we can multiply two numbers and get 0 is if this number is 0, x plus 2 is that number, or this number is 0, 3x plus 5. Figure out what x is then? Yeah. Right? What would x have to be for this to be 0? Mm -hmm. Negative 2. Negative 2. OK, here. Instead of trying to figure out what number to plug in, let's just solve for x like we normally would. 
How would you solve for x here? Yeah, you're rid of all this stuff, other stuff, get x by itself. So first, what do we do? Um, there you go. And then divide by, divide by, divide by 3. x is negative 5 thirds. Okay. If x is negative 5, let's, let's try that one out. Like, we'll just re, uh, re anything. We're just going to test it out. We're going to plug it back in up here, see if it happens, see if we get 0. Now, when we plug it in, we've got to plug in negative 5 thirds to both of them. Right? Negative 5 thirds plus 2, 3 times negative 5 thirds plus 5. What's this going to be? I'm not even going to bother with this to like, find a common denominator and all that kind of thing because what's going to happen here is 3 cancels with 3. Get negative 5 plus 5. 0. 0. 0 times. Negative 5 thirds plus 2, whatever that number is, it doesn't even matter, right? Because 0 times that number will be 0. Okay. So, this counts down to 0. Here's the common theme. Take two minutes and do whatever you want. Another one, real quick. All right, and then, well, I'm getting you one. Um, 2x plus 1 times 4x minus 5 equals 0. So here's a number, here's a number, two numbers. Multiply together. Three. Okay. <coughs> like A times B. <coughs> number times another number, and it equals zero. And we said, what about A or B before? One has to equal zero. One of them has to be either A is zero or B is zero. Okay. Well, now this is like A, and this is like B. That's a number, and that's a second number. Not talking about x, I'm talking about 2x plus 1. That whole thing is a number, and the whole thing 4x minus 5 is also another number. So? Excuse the interruption, there is a white on here. So 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, and we figure out what x would we have to use to cause this to be 0. In order to figure that out, we just solve this equation. And or this other number is equal to 0. We gotta figure out what x would cause that to be zero. Subtract one of both sides, two x equals negative one, divide by two, and x equals negative one half. Well that makes sense. If I multiply two times negative one half, two times negative one half would be negative one. And the negative one plus one would be zero. If that were zero, it wouldn't matter what that was. Zero times that would be zero. So x equals negative one half is the solution to this equation. Good. Do you know what's funny the other one? <laughs> okay. Uh, on, on the other one? Yep. Yeah, so um, minus or plus 5 on this side. Okay, where x equals 5. And then divide by 4. x equals 5. Six. It's a real old school equation to me, right? So it's, it's pretty ingenious. Whoever figured this out decided to do it the first time in, in all of history. It was probably pretty excited about this because it was really clever. Uh, they factored it, which we'll work on here in a sec. And then they set each factor equal to zero, and then solved each one. Like they created two really easy equations out of a really complicated looking equation, and solved them both. Really cool. Like yeah. you said, was that dude that like figured it out? Have you ever done that? Figured out something? I just figured out something original. Yeah. Like make it up. Uh, I have like figured stuff. Out without help, but it's not like it was the first time in history that it happened. Uh, have you figured out the problem from that movie where that dude's the janitor? The Will Hunting? Yeah, have you ever done that? Uh, no. no. I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, Alright, so that 
<laughs> That's pretty good. Right, so now the next step would be, well, what if it's not yet factored? Then we have to factor it and then reset each factor equal to zero. Okay? That's what we're gonna do. So it's just one more step, but we'll we'll factor it. So we'll start with the easiest factoring I think there is, which is the monomial factoring. I think that's a lot more simple than the factoring we did on the quiz. Right, so let's start with that. Um, simple one, two x squared plus four x equals The two answers were negative one half and five fourths. Those are just the answers? Yep. Those are the numbers. What then if you plug them in for x, it would make the equation true. Okay. Maybe I didn't make it clear enough. Like, let's take five fourths. We'll test it as a solution, see if it works. If a solution is a solution, we plug it in for x, and it makes the equation true, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens when you plug in five fourths. Two times five fourths. That's going to cancel the four. Let's see if it's going to be a two. Plus one times four x. It's four times five fourths. Minus five. Right. So this is five halves plus one times four cancels. We have five minus five. This is zero times. 5 halves plus 1, it doesn't really matter. We don't need to find a common denominator to figure out what that is. Because 0 times whatever that will be, will be 0. And that is what the equation was equal to. So okay. it's true. It is, or it is a solution. I thought we had to do those steps that you just did. You do those to test and make sure that that's the solution. Okay. I mean, if, if me is your guide, you can be pretty certain you found that. Now we have to factor first, and then we set each factor equal to zero. It's all the same from there. Okay. First, we're going to factor this kind of quadratic that doesn't have a constant, so we can just factor out a monomial. Okay. So, what monomial can we factor out? The biggest number factor and the biggest four x. Four x? No. No. What about squared? Squared? Okay. Okay. So two x squared times what? You can't even do this. What would this be? Can't be squared. Okay. We're, we're having a lot of resistance to the squared idea. How about just 2x? There you go. Okay. 2x times what? 2x. 6? No, 2x. 2x? Just x. What's 2x times 2x? No. And it's okay. x, sorry. Let's back it up. Just an x. There you go. 2x times x is 2x oh, squared. Yeah. 2x times 2x? No, no two. 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 just 2. What does just so mean? 2x hmm? times x plus 2 equals 0. Now we've done it. We've, we've made a... <coughs> think about what you would try to do normally to solve this equation. You might try to divide by 4, or divide by 2, or Take the square root of both sides. None of that stuff is going to be a good idea. None of that stuff is going to work out. It's just going to make the, the, the equation even worse to look at. With quadratics, and with polynomials in general, we're going even with like ones that are the highest powers, three highest powers, four highest powers, five, and so on. We factor them. That's like a dream you know, outcome that we can factor that polynomial. And then set each factor. So I'm going to give you this one, and then I'm going to finish this one up. 3x squared plus 9x equals 0. Over here, number, number 1, number 2, right? Two numbers that we're multiplying together. This is a 9x. A number times another number equals 0. We set each number equal to zero. What's it mean? Yes, it was, Derek. Steven. Whoever it was, that happened. X equals zero, right? Divide two on both sides. Subtract two on both sides, we get X equals mm -hmm. negative two. <laughs> Our 
obviously really similar problem, so I want you to solve this problem as well. Factor it. Set each factor equal to zero. Solve those two equations that you created. All right, so we're going to factor out what? What can we factor out? 3x. 3x. That x is pretty important. If we don't factor out the x, it's not going to make this any easier on ourselves. X plus 3. Double check, 3x squared x times 3 negative. Okay. So the key here, okay, you can either absorb this fully now, or at least mostly now, or you could be confused and I can try and re-explain it later. But the key thing here is, here's a number. It's being multiplied by another number. We're multiplying those numbers together and you get zero, so the conclusion is, what has to be true? One of them has to be zero. Either this one is equal to zero, or this one is equal to zero. So if this one's equal to zero, then what's the solution? X is what? What? Is anybody saying anything? What is X? Zero. Divide by three on both sides, X is zero. Subtract 3 on both sides, x is equal to negative 3. All right. Um, I would be glad to make more deals like that if you guys can work for X amount of minutes straight. But it actually has to happen, and we're still going. All right, so there's an easy factoring where we factor out a monomial. Now let's factor a full quadratic, quadratic like you saw in the quiz. Yeah. And then it'll be, we've already solved them that way. We've had two factors equal to zero. So we can each, each equal to zero solve for x, okay? Let's start with x plus seven x plus 12 equals zero. Factor for me? Yeah. X plus three, X plus four. X plus four. Yeah, looks good. Zero. Very important that it's equal to zero. I'll show you what we do if it's not equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, the whole thing is blown. It just does not work. Not good news. It's got to be equal to zero. All right, so a number times another number equals zero. If that's true, then what else has to be true? One of them to zero. Here's one of them. That would have to be equal to zero. Or this would have to be equal to zero. So subtract three on both sides. Subtract four on both sides. There we have two solutions. X minus three and X minus four. One more of the story is we always want to have a polynomial, a quadratic, in this case, factor, and set equal to zero. If it's not set equal to zero, get it equal to zero. If it's not factored, factor it. Okay, the key thing here is that we have a number times another number, and that is equal to zero. Okay? If you have a number times a number, it's not equal to zero, that's no good. If you have something equal to zero, but it's not multiplication, that's no good. You gotta get to that point. Let's look at a one last scenario, possibility x squared uh, plus 17x equals negative uh, 72. Yeah. 72. Yes. Question? Mm -hmm. 
you making that face for? Some, it was a reaction to something. What were you reacting to? I don't comprehend it. You know comprehend it. What do you not comprehend it? Yeah, everything. Do you know what the letter X is? Yeah. Do you know what squaring it means? Yeah. You know, do you understand something? Yeah. Do you understand nothing? Okay, how about what's different about this equation? What? N equals negative 72. Instead of? Zero. Can we get this side to be zero? Probably. Yeah. How? Plus 72. Okay, there's a great idea. <laughs> Alright, none of these are like terms, right? So we're not going to try and combine any of them. Okay, x squared plus 17x plus 72 equals zero. Now it equals zero. That is key. If it doesn't equal zero, it doesn't matter. It's got to equal zero first. Now that it equals zero, we want to try and get it to be factored. That's four. Got some big numbers. Anybody got it? Seventy-two. Nine plus eight is seventeen. Here we go. A number times another number. That's very important. The number is zero, which means one of the numbers is zero. X plus nine equals zero, which means x is equal to negative nine. Or x plus eight equals zero, and x equals negative eight. So if it doesn't equal zero, move some stuff around until it does equal zero and then factor.